Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to another episode of FTL's Advanced Edition. Now, last time we were here, we took our Lanius Cruiser Type A out for a spin and managed to make it all the way to the end. We're going to try and repeat that performance here now, but we've been using something a little bit different, obviously. Today, we're taking out the Serenkov. Now, this ship is pretty cool. It's another Zoltan Cruiser, the Type C, in fact. And it is going to give us a run for our money, I expect. For one thing, it's got a very nice color scheme. These dark colors are pretty nice. Goes a nice contrast to the all green of the Type A and the random color scheme of the Type B. But it has a couple other pros and cons that are probably going to give us some trouble. For one thing, airlock coverage is a bit wonky. For example, we have lots of airlock coverage over here, but our medbay engines and shields are all a long way from anything. So that might make it a bit difficult if we ever need to vent them out. A couple other interesting concerns. For one thing, while we do start with four Zoltan, we only start with two reactor power. And given that we have a two power beam drone, a two power ion weapon, shields, engines, oxygen, and whatever else we might need, and one of our Zoltan starts on the helm, we might be in for a bit of trouble here once this starts out. We'll obviously have to do our best as we move forwards here, but this could give us a run for our money. Now, there's a couple other interesting things about it. Despite having that low starting power, we do have a backup battery It's already at level 2, so we can get 4 bonus power at any time. That's pretty darn useful. Especially given that we really need to rely on that power early on. Not only that, we also do start with a drone control, we also do start with a Zoltan shield, and we have a variety of, you know, not, not bad upgrades on other systems. We do start with a cloning bay instead of a med bay, so we can't manually heal our crew, we have to do it by jumping. And if they die, they'll hopefully respawn in here. But dying is also a problem, because then we lose power. <laughs> so there are some dangers going on in this ship. We'll have to see how it plays out. So we'll rename this sucker, but before we do, we have the Serenkov here, a little interesting tidbit about this. This ship is named after a scientist who discovered a kind of radiation, which is called Cherenkov radiation, which just so happens to be a faster-than-light form of energy, which is kind of cool. So we are going to rename this thing, we're going to rename it to the VSS Damnation, is our theme for this one. We're going to customize our crew names here, Grozely, you're no longer named Grozely, you're now Wrath. Here we go. Yevon C, you are going to be customized as well. Yevon C is going, now, going to now be called Greed. Wrath, Greed. Cubbon, you're going to be renamed. Let's recolor you as well. Cubbon, you are going to become... We already have Wrath and Greed. Let's take Sloth next. Wrath, Greed, Sloth. Oh, you're the same color as somebody else. Let's recolor you again. There we go. And Matt, I should recolor you too. You can be called Lust. So we still need to have some more crew come on board so we can have some more members of our... Uh, seven deadly sins here. But this should work out pretty well for us. With Wrath, Greed, Sloth, and Lust on board, things should go well. So, hard mode, check. Advanced edition, check. Here goes nothing. The data we carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet, of course. We'll need supplies for the journey, so we'll have to make sure we explore each sector before we move on to the next, and we'll have to get to the exit before the Rebels can catch us. Oh, yes, we will. So, our crew already started on their posts, so that's all well and good. But you might notice that we're a little bit at a loss for power here. We have, for example, no active shields. We'll run both of our crew into the engines for now and see if we can avoid having our shields, since we do have a Zoltan shield to tide us over a little bit. But... We're going to be in a bit of trouble here because we still need power to run our beam system. We can use the backup battery to get enough power for it for now, but could be problems. We'll see. Here goes nothing, though. Sector 1, let's see if we can get some good resources coming in here. Amentus Military Scout heals our ship. Foolish alien, your kind has stifled our greatness for too long. You will rue the day you back the Federation. Well, that's no good. All right, let's get this charge ion ready to go. We're going to get our beam drone ready, and in order to be even more prepared, we're going to activate the backup battery soon after we have our charges ready. Since we have maximum evasion now, there's no point in activating this now, because all we'll do is we'll waste some of its power. But if we allow the charge ion to get ready first, we should be able to hit them pretty hard once it's ready. Here we go. Almost time to hit them. So, charge ion is maximized. Hit them at the shields. We're going to fire that, activate the backup battery, turn on the beam drone, turn on the shield bars so they can't knock us out with their weaponry, and let's see if we can't actually hit them in the weapons before they can fry us. Now we're going to auto-fire the charge ion into the shields to hopefully keep them locked down. 
We fit them in the helm so they can't dodge anymore, so that's good. But now they oh good, we also broke their repair their boarding system, so they can't board us yet. Boarding us is a major problem we could have because we really have no way to defend against it. But thankfully they're gonna die before they can do much else to us. There we go, the ion comes in. But that's fine. Ship explodes, leaving behind one fuel, one missile, and 15 scrap metal. Alright, well, we'll take it for sure. Now we're gonna make sure we wait until our battery has recharged before we jump to the next section. We should immediately recharge, more or less. No? Hmm. I didn't realize that it actually would make you wait like that. That's really inconvenient, even when there's nothing else fighting us. Hmm. That's strange. Alright, well, that's something you learn, I guess. We want to try and get ourselves some more power early on, but unfortunately our early powers are weak system, extra scrap required for initial upgrades limited, which means they cost 30 power each instead of like 15, which is vicious. So it's really expensive to get that starting power problem dealt with. We'll keep going though and see how it goes. So we've got a lot of ground left to cover, we'll wait a little bit longer so we have a little bit less time to wait, and we'll jump ahead to the next jump. What's over at this beacon? Who knows? A rebel ship has been patrolling this region, and as soon as we arrive, it begins its assault. They have drones of some kind, but thankfully they look like they're stuck on board the ship, and uh, that might make it harder for us to control them. We'll have to wait and see what happens. They've got a heavy laser and a mini beam, which is not good news for us, because they're going to cut through our, our shields really quickly. There's nothing we can do about it. There it goes, already down to one bar left. So we're going to activate ourselves some backup batteries here, so we can get our shields turned on, our beam drone turned on. Charge ion is almost ready to go, and we'll fire that right now. Gets three shots off. There we go, that ho should hopefully be enough to keep them locked down. And we broke the weapons, which is perfect. Now they can't hurt us, that is exactly what we were hoping for. One of the problems with relying only on drones is it becomes very difficult to make sure that you're hitting exactly what you're trying to hit. Especially in the case of things like weapon systems, where it's really easy for them to get their systems cleared out, and then you're going to have a hard time keeping them locked down again. Thankfully, I think they'll be dead before they have a chance to actually do anything else to us. One more shot should do it. There we go. Fantastic. That's another Rebel Rigger destroyed. Ship explodes, even behind one missile, one drone part, and 12 scrap. Excellent dodging so far there, crew. Greed and Wrath are up to good work. So, let's keep ourselves a moving and see what else we can do. We have 27 scrap on hand, but it's not going to be enough in the future, so let's keep jumping and see what else we can make. And now the battery's fully charged. Fantastic. An especially well-armed pirate ship approaches us, saying, Hand over one of your crew members, and the rest of you can go free unharmed. But we're not going to surrender our crew to the slavers, thank you. That's not going to happen. I would happily accept another crew, though, if they were willing to offer us one, because another crew would be a great addition to our forces here. I mean, we could actually take our captain off of the uh, helm and put him somewhere else where we can take advantage of his power. Hopefully we can dodge this ion shot, though, otherwise it will absolutely wreck our defenses. We're going to activate the backup battery, turn on the real shields once this hits. There we go, real shields are now turned on. Thankfully, that means they don't get auto-ionized when this old shield breaks. Turn on the beam drone, hit them in the shields. We're probably going to take some damage here, but we'll see if we can avoid some of it. There we go, weapon system offline, that's what we're looking for. We need to keep them as disabled as possible, and they already offer us a slave as tribute. That's pretty con convenient. Alright, well... As I said, we do really want an extra crew, because that lets us take advantage of more power early on, so we'll accept that offer. Welcome aboard, Ares. You are our new pilot, but you're not going to be named Ares for long. We're going to immediately rename Ares. If we check our ship crew here, we can do that now just by clicking on his name, which is super convenient. Welcome aboard, Pride. Alright, we have Wrath, Greed, Sloth, Lust, and Pride already. And then we have some extra power to play with, which should make things a little bit easier for us. Unfortunately, we still have this thing going off, which is going to throw off our next jump, because we do still need to kind of wait until we have power. Otherwise, we're going to be in trouble. There we go. So we have a bit of extra power, but not enough. We can use power from here to run the shields if we need to temporarily, but that's not necessarily the best plan either. Hopefully, we can keep going here and make some more progress. What do we find over this way? This beacon has been built for a nearby civilian space station, and no one hails our ship. Well, that's not very nice of them, is it? Alright, let's jump over here then, keep going. We don't have a whole lot of space to move around in, so let's see if we can go around the other side. The exit is pretty far in from the, uh, from the right. What do we find here? An advanced rebel automated ship remains stationed near a small rebel space station. Sensors indicate it's a storage vessel for military goods. Well, obviously, we attack that automated ship to get to the storage cache. They do have a mind control, but thankfully our Zoltan shield protects us somewhat from those kinds of attacks. That might last us long enough. Actually, all we need to do right now is turn on our beam drone. We don't even need the extra power if we can help it. They have no kinds of defenses active, so if we just blast them as hard as we can, they should be pretty much stuck. There we go, knock out some of their weaponry so they can't easily get through our shields to mind control us, and we should be laughing here. 
especially since the charge ion actually shoots fast enough to combo. And they are basically dead. Nice try there, Auto Surveyor. You are done for. That's what you get for attacking us with no shields. We get 12 scrap from the broken ship, and we inv when we investigate the station, wow, that's an amazing early find. The station is a storage area for military-grade weapons. We find one that can be easily attached to the ship, getting 8 scrap and a flak gun Mark II. Fantastic. Alright, power back in the oxygen. The flak Mark II is a really cool weapon. It might actually be really good to go with our beam drone, too. What this thing does is it fires a blast of random debris in an area, so you can't specifically choose one room, doing up to 7 damage. It's really good at knocking down enemy shields and doing air damage in an area of effect. It has a long charge time, though, which might not make it the best for us right now, and we can't really afford to keep our shields up. Later in the game, though, that thing might absolutely wreck for us. It does combo in well with our drone as well, because it can get through the shields for them, but for now I think we'll keep the charge ion online. It's a pretty cool weapon, though, so it's hard to complain about that. And... I guess we'll buy one more power bar to begin with here, because we want to start getting that power deficiency done with so that we can get into normal priced power and then overcome our, our problems here, really. Let's keep moving, though, and see what else we can do. Now let's hop across this way and keep moving forwards. What's over here? We stumble across a forward scout of the Rebel fleet, and they're powering up their FTL drive. If they get away, they'll no doubt warn the fleet of our position. We can't have that now, can we? Also, this ship is powerful. Might give us some serious trouble here. So, we're going to have to activate the backer battery pretty quickly and hopefully be able to get through these guys' defenses early on because we we're going to need to do some damage immediately. So power up the backup battery, power into there I guess because we can put it there for now, activate the beam drone, charge eye on them in the shields on auto fire, try and get through there pronto. We need to, oh no, we can't be missing them, we need to hit them quickly because we can't specifically aim at anything on their ship. So if we can't knock out their helm, engines, or weapons soon, we're going to take a ton of damage. There we go, they're losing some engine power, that's good for us. Engines are broken completely, which is very good for us. We've taken a hit though, so we need to vent out that room. Otherwise we're bound to take more damage. We need to keep hitting them in valuable places, otherwise they're not going to be stopped by us. That's not valuable enough there, game. Keep hitting them with that beam drone. Good, we hit them in the weapons. That might actually take their helm away, which is ideal. Unfortunately, they've set fire to our drone control and damaged it, which is really bad for us, because if this thing burns out... Oh, good, we've destroyed them. If this thing burns out before we could kill them, they'd get away no problem. Thankfully for us, though, their ship breaks apart, and we're relieved to know that we're still one step ahead of the fleet, getting a fuel drone part and 17 scrap. Awesome. So let's vent this out a bit quicker so we can get in there and repair it afterwards. There we go. Like I've mentioned earlier, fires could definitely be a real problem for us in the future. Let's move some air around our ship, get some Zoltan in there to do some repairs. I should have saved some stations, too. That's probably a good idea. Now that we have power in the shields, I might as well send Lust in there to be doing something, working on a station, get himself some skills, and we'll send these two back over to the weapons. I think Wrath is going to take over the console now, but that's honestly fine. I don't mind Wrath having a, having a job. Sloth, Sloth is kind of lazy anyway. Sloth doesn't need to be doing that kind of stuff. I'm going to send Sloth... It's silly of me to send Sloth over to either the doors or the radar, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave him there. You can just do nothing. Perfectly in line with your position. But yeah, this makes sense because if we put him over in these, these systems don't take power anyway. So putting him there just means we waste his power a different way. Okay, 34 scrap on hand. We could buy more power so we don't have to rely on the backup battery, but I think that's still not actually our best position right now. Getting ourselves better evasion, better firepower might actually be better in the moment because we do have that battery, so for these short fights, we can still take advantage of it. So let's boost up the power into our engines and keep jumping. There's a store over there, but we don't really have anything we want to sell at the moment, so we'll just keep jumping. We have the flag too, but I'm definitely going to be planning on keeping that. Our jump leads to a remarkable binary star system. The view is beautiful, but there's nothing else around. Which is unfortunate, because we don't really have a whole lot of time to do nothing here in if we want to actually succeed in this difficulty. A nearby space station hails us, saying, Greetings! Your arrival is most fortuitous. We recently came across some extra drones. If you have some fuel, perhaps we can make a deal. I do need drones, but I also need fuel, so I have to reject that offer, sadly. That's two jumps in a row with nothing at them, which is bad news for us. Let's keep going here and see if we can't get anything else before we run out of space in our Sector 1. We arrive near a damaged and dilapidated space station. It appears to be abandoned, but we detect faint life signatures on board. Well, we could board the station to look for survivors, so let's try it. Human corpses are scattered throughout the station. We find the source of the signal, a lone survivor that locked themselves in a storage closet. We quickly retreat with them in tow back to the ship and hope they can recover enough to be of some use. Eight Scrap and Weston. Excellent. Welcome aboard, Weston. You're going to take over the doors, which should hopefully protect us a little bit better from borders. So you're going to stand in there. And we're going to rename you. You are no longer going to be named Weston. You are going to be... 
da da You are going to be... I don't want to make you gluttony yet. Hmm. I'll give you Envy. There we go. Gluttony's a long name. I don't think it actually fits. So we'll name our final crew... Final crew Gluttony. And... Uh, let's keep jumping. Over to the exit. Here we go. Now hopefully we can get out of here more or less unscathed. What do we find here? We arrive at the Long Range Beacon, and when the FTL drive is charged, we can jump to the next sector, and here we find a quick scan of local planets. We find the ruins of a recently destroyed Federation colony on the surface. Well, let's go looking for the Rebels. We were able to quickly track down the Rebel. Let's hope he's as easy to beat in combat as he was to find. Alright, he doesn't look that dangerous to me. So, we're going to uh, be ready to fight him, I guess. Charge up some ions and get ready to smack him in the face. So, we don't actually need to charge up the charge ion at the moment, so we're just going to activate the backup battery here. Boink, activate the beam drone, charge this towards them, and put some power into some various other systems. Turned off their oxygen already a little bit, that's not bad. We want to try and prevent them from hitting us if at all possible though, so really hitting something other than the O2 room would be great, their drone, if you would be so kind. I mean their helm isn't bad, mind you, but we don't want to avoid as much damage as possible. And we missed them with an ion shot, which is bad news for us. We only have a very limited amount of time we can hold all this power online. Thankfully we were able to dodge that bomb, which is convenient. Now their helm is out again, so they'll be easier to hit. But we really need to hit things down here, Gun. It's d determined to not attack their shields or their weapons. And we lost the power, which means our drone is now off. That's not good. So I'm going to try and see if we miss. Nope, that bomb does not miss, so we're going to immediately try and run some power into the beam drone again. Keep firing. We only need to do three more damage to kill them. Their shields are down. They're trying to surrender, but we don't accept their surrender. We're going for blood here. Two more damage. Can we kill them before they hit us with a bomb? Yes, we can. Fantastic. All right. Whew. Ship explodes, even behind one fuel, one missile, and 13 scrap. And we'll put the power back in the oxygen so we don't suffocate to a horrible death. Sounds good to me. 40 scrap left. Buying ourselves more power. Uh, it's not a great plan, but when battles start to take longer than 30 seconds, we need that extra power to be real power. And I think one more power bar, and then we're back to normal priced power, which is great. So that will be a very nice thing indeed. Let's jump on to the next sector. We have options of Zoltan Rebel Controlled and Zoltan Controlled. I think, honestly, Zoltan Controlled might be better for us right now because we have this charge ion and a beam drone, so taking out Zoltan Shields shouldn't be that difficult. We're going to go over this way and see what happens. Might still give us a run for our money, but we'll do our best. We're far from Federation home space here in Zoltan territory, and it's not clear whether the authorities will have any goodwill remaining. Still, we have to push forwards, and thus we will. There's a store right in front of us, but like I mentioned earlier, that really doesn't help us at all. We're going to try and go through all of these nebula beacons, I think, because we have a ton of non-ion stormable power, which is great, because we have the battery and four Zoltan. A rebel ship is guarding this beacon, and we order a pursuit course and prepare to scratch up one more. Alright, these guys could hurt us pretty quickly if they get lucky. Hopefully they don't get lucky. We're going to activate our battery immediately, and beam drone turn on. There we go. We waste a little bit of our backup power, but I'm okay with that, because it means we're less reliant on it. Please hit them in the weapons, though, soon there, game. Oh, wasn't auto-firing the charge ion. That's not good. Boink. There we go. Now we should be able to get some more damage in there, but it does mean we've already lost our shield. So hopefully their weapons are out of sync enough that they're not likely to hit us with the combo there, but it is still possible. Also, we're going to run out of backup power in a second, and then we're going to be in trouble again. So, let's see what happens here, if we can get a couple hits in before that happens. It looks like we're about to lose power, so we're going to drain some power to make it available to be used. Uh oh here comes the combo. Oh, good timing there, just failed it. And they're trying to surrender, offering us three fuel, two drone parts, and ten scrap. That's actually a really good offer for us, but we're not going to accept surrender. See if we can get more from them by killing them. I don't think we will. I think that's probably the best offer we were going to get. But we're going to try and kill them anyway. There we go, Rebel Fighter. Bye-bye. What do we get from you now? Yeah, ship explodes, giving us one missile, one drone part, and 15 scrap. Definitely should have taken the other offer, but honestly, doesn't really make a huge difference. Let's keep jumping, though, and hopefully we don't run out of fuel before we find something interesting. We've run into a pulsar, which could be very bad news. A rebel captain appears on the screen. I thought we had been doomed to backwater assignments. This is my chance to get back in command's good graces. Charge the weapons! Alright, he has a nasty combo again, and in an ion storm like this, we could be in serious trouble. Hopefully, though, they won't be as lucky as we are to have a nice, powerful source of defense against the pulsar, and with a backup battery, we can get some extra power as well, even when we're ionized. So, activate the backup battery, activate the beam drone, and let's hope for the best here. Please miss me a couple times. Ion pulse imminent. Well, that's going to take off our shield, but hopefully nothing else. <clears throat> there we go. Shield is down. So is theirs, which is awesome. So we're actually going to keep smacking them around a bit, and that should be good. 
With the extra ionization there from our powered up charge ion, we should be laughing. Another ion pulse is imminent. If it takes out our beam drone, we'll be sitting here unable to act. Thankfully, it took out our shields and our life support, so we should be okay, because it also knocked out their shields and their weapons. They got less likely, lucky than we did. Keep hitting them, and they're trying to run away now. Well, that's going to make things difficult for us. Thankfully, with all three of their core systems damaged, they're off trying to repair them. They try and surrender with a paltry offer, and again, we don't accept their surrender. We are not fans of the rebels. And beam drone, I need you to hurry up and kill these guys. Thankfully, their weapons burned, so they were an easy kill there. Awesome. And we get ourselves one fuel, one missile, and 12 scrap from their wreckage, which is barely more than they offered us to begin with, but whatever. Alright, so our shields are still ionized, but that doesn't make a big difference, because in the next sector, we're going to have no problem there anyway. Alright, we have 37 scrap. Oh, there's a store where I was planning on going. Hmm. I don't really want to go to a store right now, even though we need the fuel. We're going to keep jumping. What do we find here? A Zoltan shipyard is stationed at this beacon. We admire the display of hundreds of glowing Zoltan performing delicate exterior work on a massive transport ship. We have four Zoltan crew on board. I don't think it's that surprising to us, but whatever. Alright. Oh, we have 30 scrap to spend. I think we're going to give ourselves more engine power so we can take advantage of our battery a little bit better again. And let's keep jumping. We're going to hopefully be able to get some more fuel here before we run out, because I am playing a dangerous game here by not going to the store and buying some. We arrive to find a number of ships convening around a station. There's some unencrypted chatter between the ships, and we tune in to listen for anything interesting. Overhearing their conversation, it seems they need to take possession of an, of an enemy ship intact. We offer our services, but realize that we're immediately not equipped to do, though, do so, and I'm not sure why we offered, but whatever. Let's jump over this way. We're getting very low on fuel. We need a vent that actually lets us do something, game. This must be one of the Rebels' unmanned scout ships. Looks like there's no way around to fight. Alright, they have a beam drone and a laser, so they could potentially wreck us if they get lucky, but hopefully they won't get lucky. And hopefully our beam drone takes them up pretty quickly. We are going to immediately power up the backup battery, like so, giving ourselves power in the evasion and activating the beam drone, because that should be able to quickly take out some of their firepower, especially if it aims over here. Nope, goes for the engine and the shields, unfortunately, but that means we're going to aim the charge ion at the weapons instead, and hopefully prevent that stinking drone from ever hitting us. The weapons have been taken out by the beam drone, so we need to worry about that coming back to haunt us, and we should be able to take them out safely like this. And the weapons are destroyed. Time to go for the helm, because why not? These guys are basically dead in the water now, unable to do much to hurt us in any way. And we're laughing. Alright. Goodbye, auto assaults. You are down. Fantastic. So, ship explodes, giving us two missiles, a drone part, and 16 scrap. We need some fuel, game. That would be really nice. We're going to jump into the nebula now, and hopefully we'll be able to find some more stuff in here. But who knows what we'll find. With the sensors down, we spend a good deal of time staring out the window. It is, we must admit, rather beautiful here. Unfortunately, while it is beautiful, there's nothing in here we can do, so we're not getting any more fuel or any more scrap, which is bad news. This nebula turns out to be the hiding place of a terrified rock crew taking refuge from the Zoltan border police. They don't seem prepared to risk our leaving with their coordinates and open fire. Well, that's hardly very nice, but that's fine as well. Time to activate the bonus power, activate all of our other systems, because why not? And let's hit them with some beams. Now, I don't necessarily need to leave Envy in here. I can send them into the sensors while we're here, but we're in a nebula anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. For now, we can chill out over here. Please aim for their weapons so that we don't take a missile to the face. That would be awesome there. Little beam drone. Nope, doesn't look interested in that plan at all. And we took a missile directly to the engines, which is really unfortunate. They try and surrender, offering us two fuel, a missile, nine scrap, and an FTL recharge booster. Since they're offering us an augment, we will absolutely accept their surrender, because that is much more than we'd get any other way. And we'll send our crew in here to fix up this before, hopefully, we start suffocating. There we go, fantastic. So we'll fix up the rest of our engines, and we'll be pretty safe here then. I should remember to actually save our crew positions as well, so let's do that now. We're going to make sure we save crew positions. There we go. Now, if we need to, we can always send them back. We can't immediately heal Greed, but Greed will be able to heal up later once we get a jumpin'. So, I think what we'll do here is we will buy one more power bar. Now they're back to a reasonable price. We are still now wasting more of our battery, but the less we have to rely on the battery, the better, because... We don't want to have to be using nothing but that if we can't help it. We're going to jump over here, then we're going to head into the nebula, then we're going to work our way out, I think. We did manage to get a amount of fuel from them, so we're not on the verge of death anymore, but we are still very low on fuel, so that could be a problem. Something strikes us as odd about a moon in the distance. Let's check it out. Wow, another flat gun Mark II. <laughs> okay. Sending a shuttle to explore a beckoning cave system, we discover signs of a battle and a still-functioning weapon. Nine scrap and a flat gun Mark II again. 
Well, that's a pretty incredible amount of firepower right there if we can ever get those working. That is pretty awesome. So, let's jump into this nebula and keep going. We're very low on fuel, very low on scrap. Our systems are kind of underpowered. We have two powerful weapons for later. The tangled wrecks of many ships wait in dormancy here. We see lights flicker and what looks like debris and a rebel scout bursts from the wreckage. All right, well, we should be able to take these guys down as well with the same strategy as previously, i.e. hitting them with the beam drone <laughs> after we've ionized them. It tends to work pretty well. Activate the backup battery, get the beam drone over there so we can immediately start taking position to fire, although, of course, we miss our first shot, which isn't great news. I guess I should have waited to see if that was going to happen or not. And they're going to immediately knock out our shields, which means we're actually going to power them down quickly. Oh, haha, -ha, you missed. Because that way, the ion doesn't wreck us as it could have. Now, the next time the ion fires, we're going to turn off the shields again, for the same reason, to protect ourselves from being totally ionized when they knock out our Zoltan shields. We have really good evasion right now. They're not getting what they need, and the beam drone will kill them before power runs out. Very nice. Please give us fuel there, Auto Scout. One fuel, good enough. Ship explodes, giving us a fuel, a missile, and 13 scrap, which we will happily take. All right, now let's take a look at our ship here again. I think in here we're going to start saving up for level 2 shields next, maybe for some more firepower, because we are still relying on drones. We could be using flat guns, albeit it's a very slow strategy, but it doesn't rely on drone parts, which we're rapidly running out of. So I think we need to save our scrap for a little bit longer. If we were to jump, we have a good amount of time left, but probably only enough time to go 1, 2, 3, 4, perhaps. Not enough time to go all the way around there. I wouldn't be comfortable doing that way anyway. Or we could come around here. Hmm, who knows? We'll jump here, though, and then we'll take our decision from there. Hopefully there's a store in sight so we can go buy ourselves some fuel, but we'll have to wait and see. A rebel autonomous scout is exploring this beacon, and we attempt to hide behind a nearby moon, but the ship finds us and begins its assault. Ooh, that is a nasty combo. They also have a charged ion and a beam weapon. That could be seriously dangerous for us. Hopefully our high evasion comes through for us here, and we're able to dodge some of those ion shots so we don't immediately lose our shield, but that could easily happen. So we're going to immediately ugh, take another shot and hope we don't miss, because we need to start doing damage quickly. Please hit. There we go. Immediately power up the beam drone, and why not power up the medbay too, because, hey... Whatever. Gonna be sending some more ions our way in a second. Here's three shots. Please miss me. Power off the shields quickly. And power back on the shields. There we go. Now we might be safe from the ion here. Ah, just in time. Dodge the mini beam. Reason we do that is because you if your final stage of your Zoltan shield gets ionized, the shield bubble underneath also takes ionization damage. But Aha! If we are able to turn it off right as the Zoltan Shield goes off, we don't have that problem. So that is a little bit safer when your Zoltan Shield wears out, if the timing is right with these other weapons. There we go. Oh, awesome. Ship explodes even behind three fuel, a drone part, and 13 scrap. That was a really profitable jump for us. And we're going to keep moving. There's still no stores in sight. I might want to go to this Distress Beacon still, though, because we might be able to go 1, 2, 3, 4 even. Who knows? So we're going to head over to the Distress Beacon and see what we can do there. We don't have a whole lot of stuff that will... Oh, no. Oh, no. We're in an asteroid belt. We arrive at an asteroid field and are greeted by a Zoltan Guard. By attempting to access these closed mining fields, you are in violation of the Natural Mineral Protection Act. Your weaponry will be confiscated for processing. But we don't have time for this shenanigans. We're going to immediately activate the beam drone, because that'll help cut through their Zoltan shields. They have a charge laser, oh boy, a chain laser I mean, and a mini beam. This could be bad news for us. Thankfully it means they have a slower start, but we could be in for some serious damage. Alright. Let's immediately activate the backup battery, immediately activate the beam drone, and get ready to start hopefully tearing down these shields. We need to knock him out as quickly as possible. If this charge ion hits, that would be great. Yes, it does. Fantastic. Hopefully we can block at least one of these laser attacks with our super shield. Nope, super shields are down, which means they're going to get a chain shot off unless we hit the weapons right now. Doesn't look like it's going to be happening, though. Oh, hitting the oxygen already. That's not good news. Thankfully, they're on the verge of death already, too, and the storm should actually be able to kill them. There we go. We got them without too much trouble. Now we need to go fix the O2, but we did get a fuel, a missile, and 14 scrap out of it, so that's pretty good. Keeps us in the working here. Come in here and fix up our O2 again, then get back to business. Whew, boy. What a mess we're in here. Alright, get you two back into weapons. Charge ions back online. There we go. Oxygen's on too. We have 51 scrap we can't spend. Let's go to the stress beacon, then work our way back to the exit, and we should be laughing. Greetings. It is so good to see you. We've been out of fuel and floating out here for weeks. We were terrified a pirate or those damn rebels would find us first. Can you spare some fuel? I wish I could, friend, but you're asking for all of my fuel, which I cannot give you. I'm sorry. All right, over to the exit and let's get out of here. I don't think we have enough time to make another jump. We could... let's see. It's pretty close. If we take our jump, which there's going... 
about that far. The next jump should take them... Actually, you know what? I think we have just about enough time for another jump. So let's jump over here, then jump to the exit, then jump on. That only leaves us with one fuel in the next sector if we don't get any at the next two jumps, but we're going to take that risk. We jump into a debris field that used to be a Zoltan cruiser. Unfortunately, its NG escort takes us for the attacker and retaliates, refusing all hails. They have a hacking module, a defense drone, which doesn't really matter much to us, but they do have a nasty ion beam combo, which is going to wreck our shields incredibly quickly. So, we're going to charge up the charge ion, hopefully hit them in the shields with it. There goes nothing. And we missed. Awesome. Charge ion, please don't miss another time. We can't afford to be hitting, getting hit all this often. There we go. Activate this. Activate the beam drone. Probably should have turned that on earlier, but it doesn't really matter. We're going for the safe strats here, and they take a hit in the helm, which makes them less likely to dodge us, but, oh, actually, they didn't turn off our shields. That's weird. I was pretty sure that's how that worked. We have no evasion right now, which is not cool, because the hacking completely neutralizes that firepower, but thankfully for us, we've also knocked out their weapons with our beam drone, so they can't actually hurt us right now, even though, they, even though we can't dodge. So, Greed is a little bit stuck in there, but that's fine. He'll be okay. Two more damage and they're dead, and they have no chance of actually hurting us right now. Hopefully they give us some fuel and potentially some other goodies. What do we get from the NG Outrider? Ship explodes, giving us two fuel, one missile, and 17 scrap. Awesome. So that actually gives us enough to buy ourselves up to level two shields, but I'm not sure if I immediately want to do that. We're going to jump onto the next sector and they'll make our decision once we get there. So let's see what happens at this final beacon. We've arrived at the Long Range Beacon, and the FTL drive is charged, we can jump to the next sector. A small platform orbits near this beacon. It looks like a fueling station of some sort, and is cheerfully broadcasting reasonable prices in a spectrum of frequencies and languages. Let's dock with the refueling platform. The automated platform seems to be damaged. We can likely steal as much fuel as remains. Okay. We take the fuel, at least it won't come into the hands of the rebels. We breach the containment and access what remains of the fuel reserves, getting four fuels. Something bad happen? No. Okay. Interesting. I wonder if there's any kind of penalty for that if you uh, get unlucky. But it looks like that was perfect for us, because that four fuel is exactly what we needed. So, time to jump to the next sector. Here we go. On to Sector 3. We have op options for the Uncharted Nebula or Mantis Homeworlds. Hmm, I don't know if I really want to go to Mantis Homeworlds right now. We aren't exactly equipped to take down the Mantis. If they board us, we're going to be in serious trouble. So this might be a case, a very rare case indeed, where we intentionally go to the Uncharted Nebula. So let's try it. I, I, I'm very hesitant to not go to the Mantis Homeworlds, though, but really, we can't afford to be hitting things that are going to be smacking down our shields and then boarding us, because we really have no firepower to defend ourselves with. And if they board us, we're going to take a bazillion damage. So Uncharted Nebula it is. Here goes nothing. Nebulas were always dangerous places. Many electronics fail in these clouds. We'll have to tread lightly. Yes, indeed. However, in order to see how lightly we have to tread, you'll have to come back next time. So, thank you all for watching, everyone. This has been Vanguard of Valor playing some FTL's Advanced Edition here on board the VSS Damnation with Wrath, Greed, Sloth, Lust, Pride, and Envy. And overall, things are going quite well indeed. Looking forward to seeing you next time here on Hard Mode. Until then, bye bye